nuts and the nuts land up on the ceiling. Sometimes you chop the ends off your fingers when you want to chop up a little nuts for cake. Cooked meat, clams for chowder, soup greens to throw into your soup. Making a little pepper or chicken hash is just a few strokes rolling it up and down. Why, here is without a doubt the meanest thing in the world to cut parsley. Put that in a grinder, you really grind it too fine. This machine, instead of crushing the parsley, cuts it quick, clean, and dry, leaving every bit of the juice and every bit of the flavor. Now, to clean this machine, you press the button. Rinse it out in a little water. When you're through using it, hang it up and let it dry. Here's one here that every lady should have in her home known as the Parisian scoop. You lay it flat, once to the right, once to the left. When you scoop them out, you'll get a perfect round little ball. You can pot roast these, cut them out of cheese or cut them out of butter. When you're serving a fruit cocktail in the summertime, take your fresh cantaloupe, scoop them out like this, Mix them with apples, pears, and watermelons. Makes a delicious fruit cocktail served with a little cracked ice like you see here. But here are the two ladies. If you ever do get it, you'll thank the day you've seen this demonstration. When you press, it locks. It's like a pair of human hands. Reach in the oven and take the biscuits out of the oven. Ever take the hot potatoes out of the oven and burn yourself on the elbow? A roast chicken out of the oven, a piece of meat out of the pot, spinach, asparagus out of the water, why around canning season when you're preserving the fruits, to take the hot fruit jars out of the water like that, that machine is worth dollars to you. And here's another one that I really know you'll enjoy having in your kitchen, known as the safety grater. No doubt you're familiar with the old-fashioned grater. I've seen ladies take a grater and rip the knuckles off. When you want to grate up potatoes for delicious potato pancakes, this has a smooth, flat edge, impossible to cut yourself. Just like you were washing clothes, you rub it up and down, and you really grate your vegetables real fine, retaining all the flavors and all the juices. Bread crumbs for your, for when you're serving veal cutlets or anything like that. You want a little bread crumbs to fry your fish in? Well, there's the greatest proposition in the world. Use that for coconut, cheese, or horse ready. When you're through with it, just hit it down like that. That knocks all the food out. Rinse it out in a little water and hang it up and let it dry. Now, here is a stone made of carborundum and sapphire quartz, which is made purposely to keep these knives sharp when they get dull. A few strokes over the edge like this, and you can put a keen cutting edge on it. If you have a dull knife or a dull pair of scissors, an old sickle or a sigh, a lawnmower, cleaver, an axe, there's a tool that will really put an edge on the knife, so the knife will really cut for you. I just want to give you an idea of how sharp that knife really is when you sharpen it with that stone. Ladies, I've seen some of you try to open up cans. Now, there's a can of Campbell's baked beans. I've seen ladies open up a can and you poke a hole in it, go round the top, hippity hop, and your finger slips. Let me show you a real proposition. Look, lay it on the can, lift up the safety, and turn the key. That locks itself on the can. No harder than you were winding up your watch. Wind up the key and that'll cut the top off of the can slick and smooth. Notice how the end raises itself up in the air so you can lift the lid off, giving you a clean, smooth edge. Now that can be used for sardine cans, square cans or round cans, exactly the same way. Now this tool here, my dear friends, needs no introduction. This will save you on an average of 20 to $30 every year you use it as a peeling knife. Here's a grater for cheese, coconut, or horseradish, a fish scaler for scaling your fish, and when you're coring your apple, it's just a slight twist of the wrist, and there's the apple core. There's one more tool that I want you to see, and I want you to watch this one very closely. Many a times when you're baking a pie, you have a pudding in the oven, 
I've seen ladies wrap a towel around your hand, and many a times you burn your fingers. Hook this onto the pot like this and lift the hot pots off the top of the stove. You've got a pie pan in the oven? Get a hold of the pie pan like this. Why, you couldn't get it off with a team of horses. This will positively lift 100 pounds. There's a pail of water weighs 50 or 60 pounds. That's the way you pick it up. But there's one more tool. I'll be all through and I'll be finished. Oh, now the next tool and the last one is what they call the Sarah Bernhardt cutter. This was invented by the head chef of the Imperial Hotel in the city of Berlin, Germany. You place the screw into the center of the vegetable. Twist the vegetable until the threads catch a hold. Then you wind this up. You keep winding until you utilize the whole potato. The faster you turn, the quicker the slices. Why, ladies, here's a machine for slicing onions. The first onion that you slice with this cutter, you bless the day, you've got a hold of it. Every slice cut exactly the same thickness. Every slice cut the same size. In making what they call a rosette, pull the vegetable out like this. Pin the ends together with a toothpick. Drop that potato into the hot fat and fry it. That will come out like a doughnut golden brown. If you're serving a nice fish dinner, a little parsley goes in the center with the fish all around it, makes a very appetizing dish. Did you ever try to slice onions with a knife? You know how you get one thick slice and one thin slice? Run the knife through the center. That will separate each slice individual. Almost like magic, there is every slice cut exactly the same thickness and the same size. Wouldn't you like to have a set like this in your kitchen? Why, of course you would. Now don't forget, attend this theater every week and receive this 12-piece fascinating Ladies and gentlemen, the management of this theater takes great pleasure in making this announcement. To each lady attending this theater each week, you'll receive absolutely free a fascinating 12-piece kitchen cutlery set, one piece each time. It is really interesting and amazing to know how you can prepare your meals in an appetizing and pleasing manner. There's an old saying, and a true one, that what is pleasing to the eye is bound to be pleasing to the appetite. I'm going to demonstrate this set to you, and I want you to watch it very closely. The first cutter that I'm going to show you, now this first one is known as the Parisian cutter. Wind it through the potato like a corkscrew. When the cutter appears on the opposite side, pull the cutter out. Place the handle in the center and twist it out. This is what they call a French curl. When you fry these, they come out like doughnuts, nice and brown. Serve them with your steaks or pot roast them. Unwind it, there's two curls out of the one potato. Tomorrow morning for breakfast, Wind a little strip of bacon around the potato and serve them with bacon and eggs. They're delicious. Different colored vegetables, wind them together and you get the two colors. Here's a little trick cut. Split the curl halfway through the center. If you're making a shrimp salad and you happen to run short of shrimp, mix these in with the regular shrimp. On my word, you couldn't tell the difference until you start to eat them. Now the rest of the potato, you stuff it. We'll call this a little chicken. We'll call this here some hamburger. You might have a little meat that's been laying in the ice box for a few days. Chop the meat up fine, season it highly, stuff it into the center of the potato and bake them with the skins on. When they're done, cut them in two. Serve them on the half shell just like that. Serve them in slices when company calls. The more company you have, 
the thinner you cut the slices. If your mother-in-law calls, give her a beak piece like that. Now, the second tool in the set is known as the garnishing knife. Everything you cut with this must come out fancy. Watch this, please. You cut down, you turn the potato, and then you cut through the edge. First one way, and then the other. Sweet potatoes cut like this. Drop them into a little batter of pancake flour and fry them. When they're golden brown, sprinkle molasses on them. Serve them with strips of bacon for breakfast while they're delicious. Here's beet, you pickle them, and carrot, you steam or cream them. In making the original French fried potato, cut them in thick slices. Put them one on top of each other, cross-cut the slices, and you'll never eat a French fry any other way. The potato cut like this will not absorb the fat because they're garnished around. Pineapples cut for your pineapple and cheese salad, cut them the same way. Here is one, and this is a dandy. Cuts any thickness or any size. Open it for a thick slice, close to the top for a thin slice. Saratoga chips, you can make them for three or four pennies a pound. Just pull the blade towards you like this. If you want the slices thicker than this, open the blade, there's a thick slice. Shoestrings for your Friday fish dinner, cut them down like this. Chop them up for your vegetable soup. What this knife is really intended for is for cutting the cabbage. You know the old-fashioned board, how you rip and tear, sometimes nipping the ends off your fingers? Lay it flat and pull it lightly towards you over the cabbage. The weight of the knife across the cabbage is all that's necessary. Why, ladies, when you get slaw cut as fine as this, you'll certainly appreciate eating it. The crowning feature of the set is the cutter that I'm going to show you now. This is known as the Champine Vegetable Mincing Knife and Noodle Cutter. Now, when you want to make some real fine noodles at home, you roll the dough out like this. Dip this into a little flour so it doesn't stick to the dough, and as you roll it over the dough, that will cut the noodles in long strips ten at a time. Did you ever try to chop up a little nuts for cake? Why, well, I've seen ladies chop nuts and the nuts land up on the ceiling. Sometimes you chop the ends off your fingers. When you want to chop up a little nuts for cake, cooked meat, clams for chowder, soup greens to throw into your soup, making a little pepper or chicken hash is just a few strokes rolling it up and down. Why, here is without a doubt the meanest thing in the world to cut parsley. Put that in a grinder. You really grind it too fine. This machine, instead of crushing the parsley, cuts it quick, clean, and dry, leaving every bit of the juice and every bit of the flavor. Now, to clean this machine, you press the button. Rinse it out in a little water. When you're through using it, hang it up and let it dry. Here's one here that every lady should have in her home, known as the Parisian scoop. You lay it flat, once to the right, once to the left. When you scoop them out, you'll get a perfect round little ball. You can pot roast these, cut them out of cheese or cut them out of butter. When you're serving a fruit cocktail in the summertime, take your fresh cantaloupe, scoop them out like this, Mix them with apples, pears, and watermelons. Makes a delicious fruit cocktail served with a little cracked ice like you see here. But here are the two ladies. If you ever do get it, you thank the day you've seen this demonstration. When you press, it locks. It's like a pair of human hands. Reach in the oven and take the biscuits out of the oven. Ever take the hot potatoes out of the oven and burn yourself on the elbow? A roast chicken out of the oven, a piece of meat out of the pot, spinach, asparagus out of the water. Hey there, guys. How are we doing tonight? What's new? What's happening? Oh, uh, what's new in your guys' world? We're doing pot tarts tonight. Yeah. Um, went out and got a couple of different ones. I don't know why I got this giant thing of uh, cookies and cream. They taste horrible. I haven't tried any of the others. Uh, we got strawberry and apple, or cinnamon apple, 
or wait a minute. Orchard apple cinnamon, uh, frosted, and uh, harvest strawberry frosted. These being their simply versions of pot tarts. Um, we got, and these are no high fructose corn syrup and no additional uh, artificial flavors. Haven't tried these either, so I get these too. Uh, cinnamon sugar pretzel. We'll see. I, I I just don't just off the name of it. I mean, really, you're gonna get pretzel flavor? If not, I mean, you're definitely not gonna get pretzel uh, texture out of a pop tart. But let's see. And like I said, I've tried these guys. Apparently, we also have a. Pork tenderloin here, which this is hanging out, warming up to room temp. Hey, Andrew, welcome in here. Okay, is that better for Echo? I keep trying with the mics. Sorry, guys. Um. Cool. Um, so we're going to do pork. I'm going to roast some potatoes off. I got these guys kicking around that I need to get done with. Use them somehow. Um, going to be doing dessert with these guys. This is going to be starting with first is the uh, uh, pastry cream for that. Uh, going to be doing essentially the same recipe of pastry cream as I did a couple days ago for the uh, Boston cream pie. I'm just going to do less of it. And I'm going to do a miafuli, which I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of that. I've actually made that properly before, but this is going to be a poor representation of that. It's a thousand layer dessert. It's one of these pastry dishes using puff pastry. It's typically uh, three layers of puff pastry separated with uh, pastry cream. And so I'm going to try substituting in Pop-Tarts for our uh, uh, pastry or uh, puff pastry. I am doing lovely tonight, Pew. Uh, having a good day. I was ready ahead of time. Things are relatively clean to start the day off. Welcome in, Head Mama Bear. So, we're going to be in, on top of that, we're going to do a, uh, a smoothie uh, with uh, the strawberry Pop Tarts and some strawberry ice cream. Sort of half doing this as an excuse to buy the strawberry ice cream. I love Strauss ice cream. Um, well, let's see here. We need to get started with our pastry cream. And so I'm going to get a cup of half and half. Or is it a cup of cream? Half and half. I'm going to use the cream anyways. Uh, just because I want to use it up. Hey, Mr. Landiggity. How are we doing tonight? What are they? If, are, if you're, not, you're not familiar with uh, Pop-Tarts, they may be just a U.S. phenomenon. I don't know. But uh, let's open one of these up and show you guys. They are toaster pastries here in the U.S. A breakfast dish. 
Although they're all incredibly sugar laden, absolutely full of sugar. So, rather unceremonious. The dough is very bland. Um, doesn't have a ton of flavor to it. Uh, they're they're not very impressive. But essentially, they're 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 a toaster pastry. They're designed to be uh, put in your toaster or quickly heated up. I am gonna heat some of them up for dinner tonight, but that's gonna be for the dessert. Um, so we've got these ones, which these are the strawberry filled ones. You guys, a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a glaze in there. <laughs> you want me to wrap everything in bacon, don't you, Glass? Not, not that I'm necessarily protesting that idea. But, so this is what pop-tarts are um, these are the strawberry ones we've got orchard apple cinnamon frosted cookies and cream and cinnamon sugar pretzel the apple in the cinnamon sugar uh, pretzel. I'm going to crush up one or two of each of them and use them as a uh, crust on the pork tonight. The strawberry ones are going into the milkshake that I'm gonna make a little bit longer, later on. And uh, the cookies and cream and I don't I haven't quite decided here. Maybe we'll mix that up, but we may use a number of them for the dessert. So I haven't tried I tried the uh, cookies and cream ones, which meh. They're they're on par with their other chocolatey ones. Um, probably better if I heat them up. We'll see what they're like that way. These ones are their, uh, the Simply ones are, these are, there's the only two of them. There's the apple and the strawberry. They're natural flavors, no, uh, uh high fructose sugar. And, uh, I haven't tried the pretzel ones either, like I was saying earlier. Don't know how you can really get the texture there. Um, they'll probably get close on the flavor though. Welcome back in, Peking Broth. So we're going to start with our pastry cream, and I need to get a cup of cream going here, or rather I'm going to use up the last of this bottle of cream. Actually, I'm just going to top that with water so it's a little bit like half and half. Enjoy that, Lurk. Glad to have you in. Um, eggs. So we got that on a low flame. And get a bowl going here. Put the half and half back in the fridge. So three egg yolks tonight instead of six like last time. I 
I think I broke that yoke. Even just lightly handle it with my hand there. sort of small I got gypped I don't think that's a large egg guess I gotta make another egg sandwich you guys saw a egg sandwich I posted on Twitter that was using up the uh, egg whites from the uh, Boston cream pie Last time washing our hands here for the eggs. Side for now. Put you in the fridge. Ooh, I have a bag of sugar open somewhere. Thank you, Mr. Land Diggity. Welcome in, Nan Reader. Set. We're doing a quarter cup of sugar this time instead of a half cup of sugar. And we're going to whip this up real good. Do have a boss battle going on right now with Stream Raiders. Uh, starting right off with a good battle. Let's use the colorful whisk. Pinch of salt. A couple tablespoons of flour. Uh, last time this recipe called for a uh, quarter, quarter cup. And so I'm doing, it would be a tablespoon and a half. But I'm going to do two tablespoons as far as our thickener. So it might even be a little thicker tonight 
than it was for that cream pie, which was pretty thick cream. Get the vanilla extract out for later and butter. I have enough butter here still. What do we need? Oh, uh, we're okay. Cool. So we're waiting on our milk a little bit, or our cream, or half and half. I don't know. I probably read it and probably said to do so. Nope, don't really need to. Just have been. I mean, typically it's a, it, you, typically you wouldn't need to, and my normal, just straight extract, I don't. I have just normal extract. Um, I, I don't know, maybe something about being sugar involved or something made me think I should... Okay, how are we doing over here? Oh, it's not like I have a packed fridge either. Nice and thick. Hopefully we'll pipe out well. I'm actually thinking of piping this this time since it's a nice layered dessert. Got uh, some disposable uh, pastry bags, which I have to find again. I don't know where I hid those. Um, we'll throw some of this in that when we go to make dessert. But starting with this first, because this requires time to cool down in the fridge, it's going to have to hang out for a while. Um, we want to get this cooked, we want to get these eggs brought up to a proper temp, and then we want to get it in the fridge so it's nice and cool. Um, yeah, let's do our battle here. That cream is just ready to go, though. Let's see how we fare with our boss battle. Welcome in, everyone.
Wow, Jay Lane, that archer almost bit it. Tanks just stealing the show there. Stealing all the kills. Victory. Awesome. Now uh, let's go bottom route. Okay, back to this. We got our cream up the temp. Even with me turning it down. We're going to bring that over here. Give ourselves something for this bowl to rest on so that it stays a little bit more stable when I go to whip it madly. going to add a little bit of our cream mixture in there in hopes of not cooking all these eggs and loosening them up and tempering them is what we're doing. We're keeping them from being completely all shocked from that high temp cream. trying to keep from having scrambled eggs here. Now we got that, we can pour this into the pan. Should have left that there. Don't put your pans on your boards. There we go. We're going to return this back to the heat. Medium flame here. Bring that up the temp. Put our butter away. Check my phone right quick. Not the same to send me an ad, Amazon. So, nice and loose right now as our eggs haven't thickened this up at all. Or that flour. But as it comes up closer to a boil temp, this is going to quickly thicken, become almost paste-like here over the next, oh, eight to ten minutes. Uh, do I have just a, yeah, it's only on here though. I want to go to this anyway, this. Anyways. There we go. And so it's already starting to thicken up a little bit. There we go. Now you're starting to see the ribbons. And we'll turn that down a little bit now. 
So we want to cook that flour. We don't want to just dehydrate it. Turn the heat off here. Turn this over here to the board and start adding butter. That is looking sort of broken to me. I don't know, I haven't seen his channel. I am intrigued. For those aren't that aren't familiar um, with Bob Ross, first off, he's a great artist, but uh, passed away. And Twitch has gotten the rights to replay his uh, videos here. So there is a Bob Ross channel here on Twitch. We're going to run that through a strainer. And we're going to hope that this can survive. Because uh, I don't feel like remaking it. Um, oops. Meant to drop that.
Okay. Yep, that's definitely broken. Which is sort of weird. Worked so well last time, it's probably because minor indifference and uh, measurements for different size. Thank you for the follow for Pega. Yeah, that's wonderfully broken. We're still going to live with that. Because we're going to live with it. You guys see it won't matter too, too much. Well, Papega, this is Wednesday, so tonight is uh, ingredient challenge night. Doing uh, pop tart pop tarts tonight, so I'm gonna use pop tarts for a crust on our pork tonight, and I'm gonna do a layered uh, pastry cream, which you just saw there, broken with uh, pop tarts, and uh, that will be our dessert. I'm also going to be doing a uh, strawberry uh, milkshake. But working on potatoes here next. Uh, we have a weekly vote in the Discord. It came down to a tie this week. We had either baby food or Pop-Tarts that I had to use for dinner and dessert. And I had to get a streamer to break the tie. Because, I don't know, I felt uncomfortable asking someone in particular from this court or whatever. So I'm going to set up later tonight a new vote between... There are a couple ingredients that we do have votes for now. So I'm going to have to uh, go with those, but... There's additionally in Discord an ingredient suggestion list where people can vote. I take the highest ones from the ingredient suggestions, put them on vote for the week, and every Wednesday I have to use whatever was voted on as a part of dinner. Convoluted uh, description enough for you? So these guys have been kicking around this pantry for a week or two here, so they're starting to try and sprout out a little bit. Fried chili potatoes. Like some sort of spicy potato dish. Ah. 
nice. I do all sorts of stuff. Um, gonna be doing nachos coming up in the next month. I don't do a ton of spicy stuff. Not a big hot sauce guy. Um, much more interested in trying different things in the kitchen and doing different techniques and trying different recipes. But if you have pictures, feel free to throw them up in the Discord. We gotta uh, show us your eats or your your food pic pics uh, channel going there. Put all my food pictures up there. I've got a couple of people else that share occasionally. I think that'll be good for our potatoes. Thanks for joining and thanks for the follow, Vega. Hope you have a great evening. These guys got green sprouts, which I don't know. I haven't really decided personally I've had several chefs tell me uh, past chefs instructor chefs um, it adds considerable bitter note which I don't know maybe it maybe if you're cooking your garlic really hot or if you're doing a hundred different sautés you can tell that difference But I'm going to follow their direct, their lead and uh, pull out those little sprouts, trim our tops, and we're going to thin slice these guys. Garlic, potatoes, a 
turn our oven on here. Four hundred degrees. And the fan on. Yep. Glad I did that. That looked worrisome to me. Put the vanilla back in the fridge. Even though it doesn't need to be in there. Olive oil. Oh, depends on what I'm using it for. In this case, I just decided to use olive oil. Um, vast majority of the time, I use sunflower oil. Because the vast majority of time when I'm using an oil, I want something neutral and I'm more interested in a smoke point. Sunflower of the organic oils is, is on the cheaper end. And uh, so I typically go for that as far as my general purpose neutral no flavor oil. Um, it's got a high smoke point up around 500 degrees um, versus more like... 350-ish, I think, for olive oil. Um, and if you want to go for the flavor, um, avocado oil definitely for, like, salad dressings or anything along that line um, where you're not really heating it up hugely. Um, when you're cooking it with it, vast majority of the time, unless you're doing something like Italian garlic really low and slow in olive oil or something like that, or you're infusing flavors, uh, just stick with cheap oil. It's a lot more cost effective. Salt. MSG, sort of like salt 2.0, and black pepper. I'm going to keep this sort of simple. I was debating throwing some thyme, I was debating a little rosemary in there. They're great in with potatoes, but with the whole Pop-Tarts pork dish, I'm gonna keep this simple. So just oil, salt, pepper, garlic. I also believe that I bought the olive oil originally because I knew that I was going to be doing mayonnaise, which is sort of on the edge there. You want the flavor of the oil and that's not an uncooked one, but with mayonnaise you're using so much oil. And so with mayonnaise I would, I would do like 50-50. I would pick a nice flavorful oil that you like, but use that neutral oil to bulk it up. Uh, there's also some oils that I love having around. I wish I could keep them around fresh because they usually sell them in too large of a bottle to really use. But I love having sesame oil around, both both uh, toasted and untoasted. They give great nutty notes, great for all sorts of dishes. But you only need like a couple drops of them to get the flavor in from that. And so I don't want to buy, you know, a giant bottle of sesame oil. Um, I'd do the same things if I could get 
reputable versions of uh, truffle oil, but that really vast majority, vast majority of truffle oil is uh, using. I, I forget the. It's literally the same smell they use to imitate feet, but um, it's literally just a chemical added into the oil in the vast majority of truffle oils. Um, but it'd be nice if I could have like a small vo vial of actual truffle oil and maybe a small vial of real good quality sesame oil. I might be willing to spring for that over buying like a 16 ounce bottle that's going to last me a, two years and be horrible for the second year. So we're waiting on our oven to heat up. Garlic's probably going to slightly burn with this. I don't care. I want the flavor. Do a couple of dishes here while that oven heats up. Try and keep on top of things tight. Thank you for that follow whistle effect. Welcome in. If you're just joining us, I don't know if you've been lurking around or not. We're working with pop tarts as an ingredient tonight. We I've been doing uh, weekly votes in my Discord, and so tonight was between a tied race between baby food and pop tarts, and got a tiebreaker for pop tarts, which, to be honest. I almost think Pop Tarts is harder. Because baby food is just pureed like veggies. Um, so, besides the uh, uh, that, we're doing, gonna use the apple cinnamon and the pretzel ones and use those to make a crust for our park pork park tonight pork tonight gonna turn the strawberry ones into a milkshake and then I'm gonna do a, a mille fouli probably butchering that proper term French term uh, pastry made up a broken pastry cream earlier we're cooling down, and I'll do layers of pop of uh, pop tarts with pastry cream for dessert. Uh, but potatoes are just a side dish. Waiting on the oven for those. Let's see if I can't chop up a little broccoli too. Pull up my boxo veggies. Let's 
we'll saute up a little broccoli with some red pepper. Nice. Battle time. Let's do our Stream Raiders battle. Mama Bear stealing the show. Gretz, Pew, x -Pi, and Jaylene. If you guys would like to join in, the link there is in chat. Uh, I th think we'll start here fighting off these guys off to the side and take out the catapult first. Go back to chopping veggies. these guys down into roughly the same size very roughly the same size Use our broccoli stem as well here. You can tell this thing was watered, watered, water, 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 watered, and then let this dry out as it went to market. Even though it's a farmer's market. Batch of broccoli. Cut that first piece of broccoli backwards. I don't know why I did that. It's always better to cut, or at least in my experience, I don't know if someone else will tell you different. I always start at the frayed top because that's got the more stuff to deal with. When you get down to the bottom and you got less to deal with, then you just got this large stem. So it makes it a little bit easier cutting the whole veg this way. If you start from the messy top to the
We get this half head of fennel bulb. Take the stem out of there. Take the stem out of there. Throw the potatoes in the oven now. Actually, I'm going to spread those out a little bit more. We don't want them on top of each other. Set a 20 minute timer. Potatoes should take 40 ish, 30, 40 ish minutes. Um, the pork's going to take 15 to 20. I'm uh, going to throw both of them in the 400 degree oven. So uh, figure 20 minutes in here, we should be adding our pork into the party. No, I didn't take the stems out this time. Let's see, do I want to do any shallot in this too? Why not? We got time. Let's 
Is there an actual shallot under here? Don't know why my hands are shaking tonight. That's not good. Yep, I didn't mean to do that. So I'm going to save some of this garlic. Some of the garlic's gonna go with our pork. Gonna need pork with our, or garlic with our mustard uh, crust along with our pop tarts. So I'm gonna do a. I'm gonna like lacquer the the pork with mustard and garlic, and then I'm gonna use that sort of as the glue to hold our pulverized. Pop tarts to it. And just a second, I'm gonna go and grab something to grab my water. Grab an aspirin. Because something's got my Close bedroom door there so we don't get the smoke alarm going off. <sighs> okay.
So we're going to leave this all sort of separate here until we're ready to go with dinner. Sorry, just kicked my uh, lazy Susan door there. Um, So there's our broccoli for later. A little red pepper in there. Otherwise we're set. Just straight saute, 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 saute. Let's get our pop tarts together here for our crust. And we need another bowl. mustard in here. Yes, I do. Bought mustard thinking that I wouldn't have any luck. Well, excuse you, bottle. Do a little bit of that guy. A little bit of this guy. Excuse me, do you have any gray poop on? I don't know why that was so hard to pull off of there. Need to be a mustard fan to do that. I like me some mustard. Okay, Grey Poupon, typical French's. Because I just saw it in the door. Little Lee and Perkins. Worcestershire sauce. And a little splash of soy. That was more than I intended. And our garlic.
onion powder. Smell that garlic starting to burn with the potatoes. Don't care. Salt and pepper. MSG. Take our mysteriously pre-trimmed pork tenderloin here. I bought this guy like this. Whoever uh, butchered this butchered the top of that. It might have been on purpose um, to try and make a more uniform uh, tenderloin there. But, I mean, that's a... I mean... That's a good hunk of meat that's typically up here that's pretty much lost. And this is also, this is sort of like a side piece of meat here. If I want to tear apart the fat line there, that's going to come apart. But we're going to leave that. I could also peel off the silver, silver skin under there. I'm going to leave it. Take a silicone pastry brush here and start painting. Making sure we get both sides, not just the top. I'm not going to bother with the bottom. But make sure we get those sides. I'm going to use all of this. You could see how, me how carefully measured it was. I get the camera there. Not quite. Tried. Give these a quick rinse. Make sure we get all that mustard yellow color out of there so it doesn't dye our silicone forever. Pour our wood bowl. We're gonna do apple and pretzel for this, right? Let's see what those are like here. Let's pull this off the board. Do this so you guys can see the containers here. Let 
pull one of those out. Do one of these guys. Gotta be close to another battle here. Five minutes? Okay. Almost time to put our pork in here. We're almost running late here. Those are sort of cool looking. They're pretzel ones. They look pretzel like. And these are our cinnamon apple. Taters are looking nicely. Nice. Nicely nice. I don't know. Words. Grabber. Hi there. Rolling pen. It wouldn't. <laughs> uh, the meal fluet, <coughs> which I'm sure I just butchered, is the closest thing to something French tonight. Um, going to be substituting pop tarts for uh, puff pastry. Oh, good. I, I don't know the first thing about speaking proper French. These guys are softer. They're different texture. Yeah, these guys are almost like doughy compared to the normal ones. These are completely different crust on these pretzel guys. I think that might be okay. It's a little on the chunky side, but uh, I think it'll work. Oh, they steal, and not just the French, all the languages now pretty much just convert it from English. Uh, if you look at Spanish for like, even things like compact disc, back in, you know, was uh, actually compact disc, early 80s. Um, compact disco is Spanish interpretation. Um, but yeah, I, I, I am not a multilingual individual. I did take my hand at trying to learn Spanish. That didn't work out. Yeah, at least got this. It's almost more pastry-like. Why is that? Trying to make sure and pack it up along the uh, edges and sides. Uh, 
I don't know how this is going to work out. I'm a little worried the sugar is going to get too far gone. But... Oh, okay. Okay, so we're going to get rid of that. Sort of the strandy pieces, the edges. And so that was about... You could have gotten away with three there instead of four. Wanted to do a pack and a half. So let's throw this in the oven there. Start 18 minute timer. That should get us real close on that pork. Let's do our battle. Congrats, Entropy X Pi and Head Mama Bear. Oh, let's see here. Trolls, slimes, tosser. Let's start right over here. Used to be a lot. They, they keep getting this a lot harder. When it was starting in beta, it was like no question where you put your characters, because you know nothing was in the like blue section or in the purple sections. Now it's getting to be like you just sort of have to pick and choose. Um, so let's see here. Let's go into Discord, and we'll. Oh, if he wants to show Discord. Never wants to show Discord for me. There we go. So here we have the winning Pop-Tarts battle. Let's see what we're doing here in uh, ingredient suggestions. See if we got any votes in here. Um, Vegemite and Twinkies. Looks like we're doing either Vegemite or Twinkies next week. On it's gonna be the fourth. Oh, uh, let's see what we got here. We'll go with that. Not a great selection of... And so you guys can vote by clicking on the chef logo there for either one of these or both of them should you choose. You can vote for as many things as you want, but you can only vote once. Um, 
I have no idea. To be honest, I haven't looked in the stores. I will do my darndest to try and find proper products, but uh, I, I am working a little blind with that. Uh, so we got our veggies aside. We got that in the stove. We got this ready to go. Let's make ourselves a milkshake. Good stuff. If you guys are not familiar, good stuff. And this is the Simply Strawberry that I showed you guys earlier. Then there, if you guys aren't familiar, Pop-Tarts, they're a toaster pastry. Thin layer of fruit or sugar or cinnamon or inside. And frosting, more like solid sugar on the outside. I'm gonna have to try those uh, pretzel ones now that I broke them up for that crust topping on the pork. That's a, uh, they got some interesting texture to them. Much softer than I think the other ones are. Uh, mute. Now, I stole this recipe from online. I didn't think of the idea of throwing uh, Pop-Tarts in a milkshake. However, I thought it was sort of a cool concept. Uh, all the reviews I've heard of it uh, explain it sort of like you get a little bit of that mealiness, almost like it's like a cookie dough, which should be interesting. So we have our milkshake. Welcome in, Becca. How you doing this evening? Uh, do I have enough to fill that guy up? It definitely needs to be 
cleaned. Definitely have not used this glass in years. <laughs> Good old Rainforest Cafe. Wow, you can really hear my stove on the mic. I can't hardly hear that creaking or changing at all in person, but I can really hear it in my headphone. Wow, that fit pretty well. Oh, that tastes great. Oh, that's great. I love that. Oops. Went too far with that one. That tastes amazing. That uh, it's, it's definitely a winner. The fanned out strawberry going on. Move stuff around here so I can take a photo. So, uh, cheers, guys. Oh yeah. Thick, creamy. It does have a little bit of that like doughy uh, cookies and cream-ish to it. That's a winner right there. Okay. So we got that done, we got that done. Let's do our last. One more pan dirty tonight. This time, let's see here. Gonna definitely do the cookies and cream uh, Pop Tarts. It's this is sort of sad on the frosting there. And 
I think I want to go back to the, or no, let's do the, let's do the apple. The apple's got a nice white top. Let's see if we can't get one of these with a nice white top to it for the top of our dessert. Do we want to go that tall? Let's see. We're doing... Yep. I think we can risk it. Let's do the pretzel one too. You know, actually the pretzel should probably be the top of this. Those just look the best of all of them. So these are ready to go into the oven when we're done with our potatoes and pork. Doesn't look like the pork is burning or anything like that, so I think we might be okay with the sugar there. Maybe a little thick. <laughs> I don't know, did I, I get that in my mustache? Really falling behind on dishes tonight. Gonna have some work tomorrow morning. Yes, I'm sort of weird. I sort of like doing a couple of dishes in the morning with my coffee while I'm waiting the water to boil, all that sort of stuff. I won't leave anything nasty behind, but I'm not gonna sit here and sanitize everything tonight. An ice cream sandwich out of that was in the running. I thought that was maybe just slightly too simple, but uh, that certainly could happen here. I mean, we do have the strawberry pop tarts, and we have the Strauss strawberry ice cream. Um, got another minute here. Um, well, excuse you, Drain. To be honest, I'm still working on um, the frosting from the uh, roll cake. <laughs> uh, I didn't have the heart after sitting here and whipping that uh, Swiss buttercream by hand to throw out that last little bit. And so, yeah, that's been graham crackers and frosting snacks on... is looking half decent here. Let's give that a temp. That's going to need a little more time. I don't mind my pork being a little under, but that needs a little bit more time. Ever 
taters a little bit of a toss and turn and make sure we get all those like dark sized sides back up on top. Yeah. We're gonna leave the pop tarts out because I have to wait on I can't fit all three pans in my oven. Uh, I can fit the pans both this way and this way in there, but I can only fit one of them narrow wide, long wise. I can't put two of them in there like that or like this. Yeah, Becca, there, there was a legitimate and there still can be a legitimate concern with undercooked pork. Uh, the industry here in the U.S. has largely moved on from that using different processes for growing, for raising their livestock. Um, it used to be much more dangerous to cook, to eat undercooked po pork. You had a, a trichinosis or something along that line. I'm probably butchering the name of it. Um, which you only get a couple cases of a year these days. It used to be a serious thing where if you didn't cook it to 160-ish, um, you're in danger. But it's, it's so rare these days because we're cleaner. We, we well, I'm not going to get into that. Let's see here, catch up on chat. Um, homemade Dunkaroos of a sort. Yeah, that's straight up along that line. Um, it's something my mom used to do too when I was a kid, when she had leftover. I was always a frosty junkie. Frosty, frosting junkie. Uh, if the pork's all white, it's overdone. I. Like I said, other than the fact that pork is a much safer product these days, I agree with you. But essentially the problem was uh, we were raising the pigs too dirty. And now that we're raising them a little bit cleaner, a little bit safer... Take a look at our pastry cream here. Oh, that's, it's broken, but it's not, it's doing pretty well. This being the first thing I worked on in the stream. for me yeah that works for me it was broken I'll give it to you guys without question that is a broken uh, pastry cream my pastry cream the other night for the Boston 
uh, the same recipe. I just cut it in half, so maybe a little bit more volatile with the smaller ingredients. But uh, awesome recipe for when it came out for the Boston cream. Winner. Turn the heat up a bit now. Wait until we get that up to near smoke. We're very, very faintly smoking right now. Switch mics here. Didn't do it. Got a bottle of wine open. Perfect time for that. I'm gonna throw in a splash of vinegar. Full high heat now. Add in our stems and our uh, fennel. We sort of want to sweat these down. We're not worried about texture on these guys really at all. Hit those with salt. pepper flake. A little cayenne. And some black pepper. Okay, a little MSG too. Good 
get a little chicken stock or more wine. I'm gonna add a little water. Just need a little steaming action to keep this going. So I think our potatoes are looking good there. Set those off to the side. Let's pull our pork out and see how our pork's looking. That's looking nice. See how we're doing temperature-wise? Smelling nice. That uh, cinnamon's definitely coming out. That's feeling much more cooked now. Might be slightly over my standards, but I think we're good. As far as being safe. So I'm going to cut the heat on the oven now. And put our pop tarts in. These guys are just going to be a couple minutes in here. gonna try and transfer this guy over to our cutting board that worked pretty successfully I think that turned out all right there moment of truth uh, let's let this sit this needs to sit another couple minutes. Um, got that and that and that ready. Let's make sure we got a timer so I don't forget about those pastries. And let's put a pastry bag together. I 
actually put them away. Proper place. Who would have thunk? Okay, now that we got these all cooked down to a nice sort of mush for our base of our veggies. And hit those with a bit more salt. That way there these are over salted and these are under salted. A bit more water in the pan or wine or stock. And we're essentially steaming these guys in with it. Almost there, folks. Heat off on the broccoli. First here, we got our pork moment of truth here. Actually, probably could have gone even thicker with that because it started to congeal into like a crust. Let's get a photo of that bad boy. Oh, sorry, not giving you an up close view. there. Yeah, I'm happy with that cook. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Grab some of these. Lovely roasted potatoes. A couple slices of pop tart crusted pork. Ooh, that's... Heck yeah! I am liking dinner tonight.
Yeah. Nice and spicy with that broccoli. Got all that heat coming through. Sort of wish I had a nice uh, demi gloss for this right now. There's our pop tarts ready. All right. I'm not going to worry about crushing this. There's dinner. Let's give you guys a main view close up on that bad boy. Roasty potatoes in the back. Swap mics once again. <coughs> so we'll set this guy off to the side. cold enough to hold I'm not worried about throwing it up there and we need to do our pastry cream take our Mightily thick pastry cream. Force as much of this as we can into glass here. Good stuff. I mean, how can it be that bad? It's little more than butter, egg, and vanilla. Looked out of my spacing there. Okay. Actually, we'll keep using you. So it's supposed to be a thousand layers. It's going to be a little bit closer to 12. <laughs> Clean our knife off here. Ooh, battle's ready to begin. I forgot that. I missed that. Let's do our battle real quick.
Sorry. Kratz, J Lane, Fanged Mermaid, and Entropy. Thank you for joining in. Let's do one more tonight. And, uh, don't finish it during stream. I'll finish it off just after the stream. Ooh, all sorts of mobs here. Um, that was not where I intended to put him. Oh, well. He's placed there. Um, <laughs> my bad. I was moving it over there and lost my mouse click, I guess. Let's go back to making our layered dessert here. I think I'm going to start with the base of chocolate. I'm going to start by cutting the seams of these guys off. So we got nice, clean, open edges. Do about the same size for all of them here. Take off of those crusts that none of you kids want anyways. <laughs> now that's definitely more pretzel like there. When I was breaking those up for that Oh wow, those completely different product. These guys are light years ahead of any other pop pa uh, pop tart I've ever had. You like pop tarts? I, I gotta say, try the pretzel ones. Those, those are a winner. Thank you for that follow there. Uh, J.O. Pad, J.O. Pedro, John Rocket. Tried on that one. That, that one's a little rough. Couple options there with that. How that's layered there. But welcome in. Glad to have you. We're just finishing up our dessert here. So let's start with chocolate. Not sure if I want to do rosettes. I strained you through a strainer, how you're getting stuck. Oops. There goes my dessert for the night. <laughs> okay, we're skipping the... We're not going to be as pretty about this. Because it's not going through the nozzle nicely. So, 
do. Like that, and then like this. Switch to the apple, rinse and repeat here. See how that one turned out much nicer looking. Till I squash it off. It's getting a bit better as I work with it. It's a uh, too cold from being in the fridge. Cookies and cream. It's getting tougher as we get higher here because can't put as much pressure on it. Can't toy with it as much. But like I said, as the pastry cream warms up, it is moving a little bit better. I'm just going to do a ton of it here for the top one since we got the pastry cream. Meant to do that. I honestly think most of my uh, uh, product challenge desserts have been that. There we go. Wipe off that water I got on the plate. Give you guys a up close on this loveliness. Wiggly. Ah, it's falling apart. But there we go. Our Pop Tart meal for you. give that a shot here with the cameras wherever I put my cell phone last why did I put that over here I'm trying to ruin my phone ah 
All right. Let's see if we can share some uh, love to here tonight. Let's see who's around here. Oh, why don't we give her help out here? She needs some friends tonight. She's a regular lurker in our channel. And she's doing a stream of her own tonight. She's just doing a charity stream. And she needs some people to hang out with her. Um, so, um, I'm going to go and enjoy this loveliness, especially that pork. Really happy with the way this pork turned out tonight. I think that is going to be killer. I think that crust turned out awesome. Um, going to enjoy our meal fui pastry and this lovely thick milkshake too thank you all for joining me uh oh what do we got coming up i know we got waffles and chicken coming up um i'm forgetting what all we got going on this weekend uh waffles and chicken um i forget i apologize but I will be back here on Friday night and on Sunday and next Wednesday. Be sure to stop by the Discord, vote on next week's uh, mystery ingredients, maybe add a couple ingredients to your own, say hello, check out what, what else is going on in the Discord, and I hope you all have a great night hanging out with uh, Chocolate for Healing uh, while she does her uh, Wounded Warrior Project benefit. Uh, thank you. Have a great night.